Morning Hope Church. Morning. Will you um, rise and join me in the call to worship? Which comes from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? They will receive blessing from the Lord. And from God their Such is the generation of those who seek him. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in the land. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? You may be seated. <clears throat> As we make our triumphant entry, feel free, if you would like to be a child at heart, to walk around with your palm. We would love some choreography with our socks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. 
you would all like to stand and join with us, our first hymn out of the hymnal is uh, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, number 278 in your hymnal. with me. Let us pray. Lord, as we remember how Christ the King entered Jerusalem to the sound of joyful shouts, increase our faith and listen to our prayers so that we may praise you every day by living always in him. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. remain standing for the scripture reading. Our scripture today comes from the chapter of John, or from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but may follow him in the way of the cross. Amen. Please be seated. As I was standing over here singing the hymns this morning, looking across, I realized that it's that window across from me that, that depicts the entry into Jerusalem. Do you ever pay attention to these stained glass windows and the story that they tell? If you have time after church, I know some of you sitting on this side especially probably can't see that window. I invite you to take time to come and just uh, do a little visio divino, um, divine seeing, and just look at the story that this tells. It's a story that's told in all four Gospels, in Matthew 21, Mark 11, Luke 19, and the text that Kathy read this morning from John chapter 12, all of the gospel writers speak of this Sunday. Today is the day we've been waiting for. Jesus finally makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Now his ministry began out there in the sticks, out in rural Galilee, but we've known all throughout the gospel that Jesus has alluded to the fact that he would go up to the holy city of Jerusalem and establish his kingdom. The day has finally come. The Gospels tell us that Jesus sends a couple of his disciples to secure transportation. Not in John, but in the other three Gospels, we hear how two disciples are sent to secure transportation for Jesus to make his entry into the holy city of Jerusalem. Now, who would want to be put on transportation duty? If you think about it, it could be seen as a very mundane job, even trivial no one knows what these two disciples were thinking. Surely they were imagining there was a better job than being put on donkey detail. Though the Gospels do not explicitly say which two, God, which two disciples went and got the animal, at least one scholar suspects that it was James and John. You remember James and John just a little bit before this at the story of Bethany. They are there at, at Bethany in the home of Lazarus, and one of them says to Jesus, Lord, grant to us to sit one at your right and one at your left in your glory. That sounds like a pretty prestigious job, right? To sit at the right hand and left hand of a king. And Jesus responds, You don't even know what you're asking. Do me a favor. Go get a donkey. Or he might have said, Go get me transportation, you donkeys. Or... A similar word and now here they are on donkey detail some glory and yet that is what must be done before Jesus can make his entry Jesus is to go head to head with the principalities and the powers and he gets to Jerusalem on a donkey these disciples only two and a half or three years earlier were called to leave home leave their jobs and follow this man Jesus to hit the road with him and they thought surely when they followed him with a little hard work and an infusion of the Holy Spirit this was going to be an impressive project in the grand scheme of things maybe it was but it didn't seem to them to be it was a very frustrating two or three years of ministry he kept doing strange things they didn't understand. They kept having these weird experiences that they couldn't really just grasp what was happening. And it never was all that seemed to be promised when they decided to follow this man. And then we come to today. In John's Gospel, Jesus starts his trip into the city on foot. In the other three Gospels, it says that these two disciples went and brought back a donkey. Either way, as he goes into the city, he's met with people who are waving palms and cheering for a king, waving political banners. And again, he's sitting on a donkey. It's just not so impressive, is it? Have you ever ridden a donkey? Jesus' disciples always misunderstand what Jesus wants from them. Their hindsight isn't even 2020. 
but at least sometimes way after the actual events take place they begin to remember and to begin to understand what Jesus was trying to do that's one of the things that Kathy read this morning that it wasn't until much later that they began to understand that oh this was fulfillment of prophecy if not for their obedience to pay attention to even mundane details like going to fetch the donkey there would have been no Palm Sunday no loud hosannas would have been sung the prophecy of Zechariah would not have been fulfilled Kathy read it within the John text but Zechariah 9 9 declares rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout aloud O daughter of Jerusalem lo your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he humble and riding on a donkey those disciples did what Jesus commanded even when the orders didn't make a lot of sense to them in the moment now go back to the beginning of the gospel telling of this man Jesus and we hear John the Baptist crying from the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord and that's what Palm Sunday reminds us to do, to prepare the way for the Lord. That's what disciples of Jesus do, is what we're called to do. As disciples, we are the ones who are to secure the room where the meal will be served. We are the ones to make provision for bread and for wine, which Joyce and Buck do the first Sunday of almost every month, right? We're the ones who go to get the donkey so Jesus can enter the capital city in a way that reveals who he is and what his mission is all about. Such is the kingdom of God. Now elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus sends out his disciples to preach, to heal, to cast out demons. But this Sunday, let's remember that most of us disciples are called a more prosaic, even humdrum task. You're the ones who take a meal to the sick to the shut-in, to the family of someone who has died. You are the ones who say to one another, I'll be praying for you, and then actually do. Pray believing that God will intervene and that something will happen. You are the ones who shepherd children from station to station at Vacation Bible School each summer. You may not be called to heroically preach sermons on tough biblical texts, but you can bring the kingdom of God to earth through the everyday stuff you're already doing. These seemingly small gestures fulfill the will of God. They prepare the way of the Lord. We are, together, all of us, preparers of the way. Hope United Methodist Church has a beautiful sanctuary that I get to preach in and a beautiful people that I get to be the pastor to. Do you realize this sanctuary was built by members of this church? This little construction project was done by people who loved this place. The story I hear is that Dick Rittenauer and the Boy Scouts laid the pier and beam foundation for this place. That Bob Green, Deanna Bradley's dad, was the electrician who hung these lights. That Pam Mayer's dad, Joe Stater, did the original paint job in here. Bruce Miller's dad was involved in the construction here. Families that you know, the Lakachis, the Millers. And then you think about those who've kept up this place since then. People like Rick Lakachi and Bruce Miller and Randy Croson and Mary Mikes who cleaned up the mess left of the flowers from the funeral on Sunday so that it would be beautiful for Palm Sunday. This pulpit, that lectern made by Eric Gay. That Jesus that hangs over the altar that was made by Mr. Hover, whose wife was a teacher at the primary school and whose son, George, became a minister. The glass in the back wall of the sanctuary that otherwise you'd have a window into the attic, that beautiful piece of glass that was prepared by Gretchen Hoover. Lou Jodry, who made that beautiful piece of glass that we light from behind that has the rose on it that we put up during Advent. Right? You, you see those people in your mind, don't you? And you see some of them sitting here in the room. Here's the thing I want you to understand. The receptivity of the gathered congregation to the word of God presented here 
depends in part on the people who worked hard in their off hours and their free time to create this beautiful space and those who give of themselves to maintain this space so that there is a platform from which the word of God might be shared with those who come here. It's a parable of God's action in the church. Many of you are the ones who build the church through your simple task. And I get to work here and see how God is working in the lives of people here. In the lives of people who come through those doors. This place where people learn to live lives of hope and live lives to give other people hope. It's hard to imagine God's word being responded to at all without all of these preparations. Hold your hands up and look at them. You are the builders of the kingdom of God with these ordinary, grace-filled, divinely called human hands. You, all of you, preparers of the way. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's, that our faith is often more show than substance, that our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, Son of David, Savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises and to receive us as your own, even as we pray the words you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would all join with us. Our next hymn is number 280 in our hymnal, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
the choir comes forward, uh, if the ushers would be ready to um, accept our gifts and offerings. Closing hymn is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, which is number 301 in your hymnal.
all join me in prayer. Grant, O Lord, that what has been said with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and that we and what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.